Hello, I would like to welcome you to Keith Watts Online Ministries. I'm so excited today about the message, uh, and I'm just very, very excited about what's happening this coming Sunday, and I want to talk about it first. My home church, Newton Baptist Church in Covington, Georgia, our pastor, Brother Tony Howarth, uh, they made an announcement, and we're going to be having our first service, I believe, in over two months. This coming Sunday morning at 9 o'clock, and uh, half, about half of us, and then the other half is going to be coming at 11 o'clock. Uh, going to still have live stream going on in the services. Uh, but I'm so excited, and I just want to thank the Lord for opening up the doors to our church and there's other churches opening back up and we're having to take precautions and everything but it is so worth it i'm going to be missing i'm going to be going to the one at 11 o'clock and i'm going to be missing all of those precious saints that are going to be there at nine uh 60 year old and up and in our church i tell you what we have quite a few uh, couples that I really look up to. Uh, I'm talking about giants of the faith. We just have so many elderly couples in our church that I love so much and I look up to and I listen to and appreciate them and, and just so grounded in the word of God and the sweet fellowship that we have and going to be missing them, but I'll be able to see everybody else be able to see our life group and we're so close and our church is so close to each other and just a really really close church family and i was actually yesterday when i was thinking about this and uh working on my message i started singing the family of god uh of course i'm not going to sing that to you because i would get a lot of dislikes but uh, anyway it's just so exciting I am absolutely so excited about it. Can't wait and can't wait to see everybody. And just looking so forward to this coming Sunday, June the 7th. And I, I just want to thank the Lord for opening up our doors. I just thank him so much for that. And just ask you to pray for us. And we need to really pray for each other as uh, we're able to get to church uh, and have the doors open. And I just thank the Lord for that. Uh, before I get into the message, I also want to thank the Lord. Uh, this weekend, had the opportunity on my uh, ministry Facebook page to witness to some people and just really prayed and asked the Lord to give me the right verses and give me the wisdom to deal with this these people. And I was thinking yesterday and today, uh, you know, when you in the Bible, Satan, he's, he goes to God and accuses man to God, Job. And in the Bible, you see Satan going to man and accusing God to man. He's the great accuser. And uh, it's just so amazing the thoughts that us humans have and just so easily to get caught up in just really being mad at God and upset with God or there is no God at one time. And uh, I just really thank the Lord for giving me, this is the main reason why I am doing this is first of all, to get the message out there, preach every Wednesday, I mean, every Tuesday. And uh, these messages are geared towards what I believe people are going to be searching on uh, Google and on the computer for answers, for end times, for prayers, for the Gog and Magog wars and uh, that's coming up in Ezekiel 38 and 39. And it's a message like these, and, and I'm just trying to help people. I have such an urgency in my heart to get these messages out there on YouTube. It would be the last thing that I would pick for me to do this. But the Lord has called me to do it, and I've answered the call. And I have such an urgency in my heart to take these messages and send them out uh, through Facebook and on my phone and 
so many of my friends and relatives and churches. I'm sending these messages every week to so many churches. And my heart's desire is to get these messages out there. I have a burning desire in my heart for some reason, the urgency in my heart to get these messages out there. And I don't know how much time we have left. I believe that when you see what's going on around the world, it is really amazing to me what all is going on. And uh, I keep talking about that, but it just, it keeps coming up and it's really amazing. We're living in amazing times and I'm praying and that these messages will help people and they will listen to them and apply the word of God to their lives. And um, also, uh, I want to start getting on Twitter and witnessing and I'm going to have to get some help. I don't know how to do that. Don't know much about the computer, but um, I just thank the Lord for the opportunity to serve him and to live for him. And I've, I've determined in my heart that every week I'm going to be sending these messages out to as many people as I can. And I'm praying and hoping that people will really start sharing them and and getting the word of God out, uh, people that know me, the, the last thing on my mind and heart is to get to become famous. Uh, the number one thing for me is to get the word of God out. And as a preacher, uh, any preacher that is truly a preacher wants to help people. And we know that the word of God will do that more than anything. And that's my heart's desire. And so I want to pray uh, before I start the message. I got a few prayer requests. I'm going to announce them as I pray. But I ask you, I, I want to ask you, first of all, to really pray for Keith Watts Online Ministries. And uh, another goal in this ministry is to get other preachers, other pastors interested in going online into chat rooms and I'm not talking about the ungodly chat rooms, and I know they're out there. I'm talking about just regular chat rooms and Twitter, and uh, I just can't get over that preacher that uh, tw uh, did hashtag coronavirus. Uh, the article was on Rapture Ready, and I can't remember his name, but it was. he said it was unreal. The people out there hurting and looking for answers, and he was able to witness to a lot of people with open hearts. And I believe that that this is a big part of what's going on in our lives today and in our church. Reaching out, getting the website, getting the Facebook and getting the live stream and a massive amount of preaching going on the computer. And I just, um, that is my number one goal is to try my best. The Lord's laid it on my heart. The urgency is so great to get these messages out there. And the urgency is so great to share this message every week. It takes me two or three days to get it all out there. And I'm going to be doing that. The, the Holy Spirit's laid it on my heart to do that. And I'm trying my best to listen to him. And I humbly come before you and ask you to really pray for me and what's going on. The devil's fighting tooth and nail. But greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. His grace is sufficient. And I thank the Lord for that. But let's go ahead and go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, Lord, I come to you this afternoon, Lord. And I just thank you for your many blessings. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for the opportunity to preach your word. What a honor and what a privilege and what a major, major responsibility. And I take this very, very serious, Lord. You know I do. And Lord, I just pray that I will preach your whole word and that it will be the truth and it will come from your word and not from me. And oh, Heavenly Father, I do lift up some prayer requests. I do pray for my on, this online ministry that you allow me to start. It is your ministry. It is not mine. And Lord, I do dedicate this ministry to you. I've dedicated the 
uh, Facebook ministry page to you, and I, I dedicate what's happening every Tuesday to you in this ministry, and I pray that it will be an honor and pleasing to you. And Lord, I just pray for each and every message that will go out there. Lord, I've been receiving quite a bit of response on the Facebook ministry page and, and the messages, and thank you for giving me the opportunity to witness, and I believe it's going to happen even more, and I'm so excited about that. Thank you, Lord, for opening up the door at our church this coming Sunday morning. What a, a privilege it's going to be to be in, in your house. And I just pray that you'll bless those services. And Lord, I pray for America. I pray for our president and vice president. I pray for Israel and Benjamin Netanyahu and Gantz and all of the officials there. And Lord, I just lift them up to you. I pray for peace for Jerusalem. I pray for the elections coming up. I just pray for uh, my family, Lord, Jenny and Jeremiah. Just lift them up to you and pray for them. And Lord, I just thank you for your grace and helping us through the rough times and the rough times ahead. We, I just, I just pray, Lord, that you'll come down and meet with us now. And I pray that the Holy Spirit will speak through me and that I will get out of the way and there will be no hindrance, Lord, and that I will have free reign. I pray all of this in Jesus' precious and holy name. Amen. Well, last week I preached on uh, uh, God knows what's in your secret chamber. It's in between here, your head, your ears, your brain. And so much ungodliness we found in those secret chambers of the 70 Sanhedrins, uh, the Sanhedrin court of the 70 men and the ungodliness of what was going on in the nation of Israel. And I'm telling you, it's the same in America today, in Washington, D.C., in Atlanta, all the capitals, all the secret chambers and the ungodliness that's going on. But what about in your heart and in my heart? And I was gearing that message towards the born-again Christian. I keep saying this here because I'm talking, I guess, about sin, but I, I ran from the Lord for 12 years. And the last thing I wanted to hear was a message on sin. I, I didn't want to hear it. I, I didn't want to, I, I didn't pray to God because I knew I, my prayer would, not, would if it came out of my mouth, uh, it would fall to the ground. And I knew that. And so why pray? But uh, I had a man, I, I just, I wasn't going to do this illustration, but the Holy Spirit laid it on my heart. I had a man in the men's home when I was the, Superintendent of the Roloff Home for Men, Brother Lester Roloff started at People's Baptist Church in uh, 2006 to 2011. One of the men, he said, Brother Keith, when I pray, God doesn't hear me. And I spent about an hour with that man up in front of the church and talking to him about why God won't hear him. And this message right here is, is pretty much what I was talking to him about. And I told him what he needed to do and took the scriptures and showed him that he had to examine himself every day as a born-again Christian. And he was far, far, far from God. He was a preacher's kid. Um, it was He was in prison and the state of Tennessee sent him to the men's home to try to get help. And unfortunately, I had to kick him out uh, for viol major violations in the men's home. And the state of Tennessee was at the bus station waiting on him to come off. And they took him to prison. About a year later, I received a letter from him. And he said, Brother Keith, what you said really worked. And what this man did in this prison in Tennessee, and I told him that you had to examine yourself and listen to the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit will reveal to you unconfessed sin. And then when he reveals that unconfessed sin to you, then you ask for forgiveness and you name that sin. This is what the man told me. He said, Brother Keith, when I did this, it took me three days. 
to ask forgiveness for all of my unconfessed sins. And he said, but you know what? When I got to the point where all of my sins were forgiven and I was back in fellowship with my Heavenly Father, he heard me. And that that is what that is in essence what this message is all about. Psalms fifty one. How can I get away from it? Or Psalms thirty two. King David. What separated King David from everyone else? Oh yes, he sinned. And we find in Second Samuel chapter eleven that he committed adultery. We also find in 2 Samuel chapter 11, verse 14 and 17, King David committed a mur murder. He murdered uh, the husband of Bathsheba, Uriah. And he gave the orders for jo uh, Joab to pull back the men. And they did that. And I find it amazing how he gave that letter knowing that Uriah wouldn't open it. And he gave that letter to Joab and Joab followed. Joab's just as guilty as King David was. But he killed him, and he's trying to, to hide the sin of committing adultery with Bathsheba. And then uh, Nathan the prophet in 2 Samuel chapter 12 goes to him and gives him a story. And David is all mad because this, this man that had all these lambs came and got this one lamb. And he was so furious and mad. And Nathan told him, Thou art the man, King David. You are the one that has done this. <clears throat> I don't know how long it was. It was it was a good while, I believe. And that he had been hiding. And he kept hiding this and hiding this. And after Bathsheba mourned, he went in and he married her, trying to hide that the baby was out of wedlock. And so we find here that uh, that's what happened with King David. And like I was saying a while ago, what separated King David from all the other kings was is he asked for forgiveness. All the other kings wouldn't. They would keep going and keep going. And that's what separates the born-again Christian that has a very close relationship hand-in-hand -hand with the Lord, walking every day, examining him or herself every day, and getting right with the Holy God. And uh, so anyway, I asked a boss of mine to describe to him, he's lost, what is the meaning of a true born-again Christian? And he gave, went down the long list. And I knew what all he was going to say, and he said every bit of it. You go to church, you tithe, you pray, you do good, you try to do right, you help other people, uh, just on and on and on. And I told him, I says, I can give you one word that really describes a true born-again Christian. And this word is so beautiful and so wonderful. And the word is forgiven. When you receive Jesus Christ as your Savior, you're forgiven. You're pardoned. That's what forgiven means. And what a beautiful word that is. And King David was looking towards Christ, and he was saved all through the blood of Jesus. All the old saints were looking towards Christ. All the saints in the New Testament looking back at Christ. And then in the tribulation period, they don't take the mark of the beast. But anyway, that's a totally different message. But I want to remind you this before I get into Psalms 51. Uh, Psalm 66, 18. If we regard iniquity in our heart, God will not hear us. That that would bother me. That needs to bother me. Does it bother you as a born-again Christian? Because so many of us has unconfessed sins in our lives, and our sweet, sweet fellowship with the Lord is not there, or not quite there. And it needs to be. And so, 
In uh, Psalms chapter 51, verse 1, it says, Have mercy upon me, O God. He feels so unworthy to not even call him Jehovah. He calls him God. And he feels so unworthy. According to thy loving kindness, according unto the multitude of thy tender mercies, blot out my transgressions. If he's asking God to blot out his transgressions, there's got to be a recording somewhere in heaven, in books, that has the recording of all the transgressions of each and every person that has ever lived. Except for those that are true born-again Christians. The blood of Jesus Christ cleanses that sin and blots that sin out of that record and there's no more record of it and and uh, i just want to i just got to read this for a few minutes in isaiah chapter 43 it says in verse uh, 3 of isaiah 43 for i am the lord thy god the holy one of israel thy savior who is the Holy One of Israel? Jesus Christ. In verse 10, the last part of it, Before me there was no God formed, neither shall there be after me. There's only one God, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And there is no other God. There's all kinds of gods. None of them can compare to God Almighty. In verse 14, thus saith the Lord, your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, the Redeemer. He has redeemed our sins. And then it says in verse 15, I am the Lord, your Holy One, the Creator of Israel, your King. And remember, Jesus Christ is a descendant of David through Mary, and through Joseph. In verse 25, and this is what I want to get to, he says it again, I, even I, Jesus says this, he that blotteth out thy transgressions for mine own sake, and will not remember thy sins. Why? Because they're under the blood of Jesus. But this is a cleansing prayer to get back in fellowship with his God. And he was tired of running and everything. And so let me start in verse 2. Wash me thoroughly from mine iniquities and cleanse me from my sin. Charles Spurgeon made this quote. I thought it was interesting. He, had, he said, the hypocrite is content if his garments be washed, but the true supplant cries, wash me. Uh, I'm hoping that word, I'm a pronouncing it. But he's talking about that the hypocrite or the carnal Christian just wants his clothes washed. God, I just want my clothes washed. That's all I want. But King David comes and humbles himself, and he says, God, wash me. Wash me. Don't wash my clothes. Wash me of all my sins, not just the adultery and not just the murder, but all my sins. And, and just wash me and cleanse me from my sins. And then in verse 3, he says, for I acknowledge my transgressions. I'm telling you, this is the first step. You want to have an awesome prayer life with the God of the universe? The first thing you have to do is acknowledge your sins. That's why the Lord laid it on my heart last week. Uh, I was studying for this message, and I was studying out of Psalms 51 and thinking about preaching it, and I got to thinking about the laver. And, and the priest would go in every day. The priest would go in and wash his hands and wash his feet. That, that's symbolic of the word of God and the Holy Spirit washing you every day for the life of service for that day. And Jesus was going to wash Peter's feet. And Peter, no, I, Lord. 
And Jesus said, I'll have, you'll have no part of me if I don't wash you. And this is what Peter said. And this is what got my mind on the secret chambers. He said, oh, Lord, not, not only wash my feet, but will you wash my hands? And not only wash my hands, but will you wash my head? Why? Because of what I was thinking today and yesterday and dwelling on yesterday and today. And I'm so tired of the filth that I keep thinking about every day, all day. And that's how I was for 12 years. And how in the world can we get a hold of our holy, righteous God when we're having all these bad thoughts in our mind? And the apostle Peter said, please, Lord, wash my head. And this is what King David is doing right here. Oh, Lord, just just not only my feet and my hands, but my head, Lord. Wash what, wash, get everything out of my brain. And that's what we got to do, but we have to acknowledge it. We have to acknowledge every sin. And we have to get a hold, we have to ex examine ourselves and get old and ask the Holy Spirit to reveal it to you. And I'm going to tell you, he will. He will reveal it to you. And I, I'm telling you, there's times when I'm when I'm just getting so close to the Lord and trying to ask for forgiveness for this sin. It seems like it takes forever to get past that first point. And that's got to be the first point in your prayer. Is confessing sins every day of our lives. And I want to tell you, between now and the time I go to bed, I'm going to sin. And you know what I need to do? I don't need to wait till tomorrow. I need to get on my knees. I need to bow and acknowledge my sin and ask God Almighty to cleanse that sin out of me. For he acknowledged, uh, for he said, for I acknowledge my transgressions. He recognized them. And my sin is ever before me. And I'm telling you, your sin is ever before you. Well, three years ago when I preached this, I put uh, a belt around luggage and I put it on me and I walked around and tried to pray. I couldn't pray. I walked around, tried to serve God. I couldn't serve God. I went to church with them on and, and, I, and God couldn't even deal with me because of all the sins ever before me, ever before me. And I'm telling you, the sins are ever before you. And you need to confess them and get them out. And when I tell you, when, I, when I'm when i trying to get right with God every day and working on my prayer and getting right with God, I deal with my wife different. I deal with my son different. I make different decisions. More importantly, my prayer goes past the ceiling and gets to God, but only because of acknowledging my sin and asking God to wash my sin. In verse 4, against thee, thee only have I sinned. The God of the universe. I was reading last night, there's four creatures, four beasts. All they do is go around the throne of God, crying out, holy, holy, Lord God Almighty, who is and was and is to come. That's all they do. I can't get over the fact of how it was when God came down on Mount Sinai and the people were so afraid and so scared. Please don't let God talk to us or we'll die. Moses, you talk to us. God, you talk to Moses. And Moses, you talk to us. Why is that? Because of the holiness of God Almighty. And he hasn't changed. He will never change. He will be so holy. Do you realize if God Almighty came down into this room right now and I looked at him, I would die because of being in this flesh, of this sinful flesh. That's how holy he is. That's why he takes sin so seriously. And we need to do the same thing. Against thee, thee only, have I sinned and done this evil in thy sight, that thou mightest be justified when thou speakest and be clear when thou judgest. I was thinking about this a while ago, going over the message again. The judgments of God and all judgments are for the Redeemer, the Savior, Jesus Christ. He's going to judge the nations. He's going to judge the lost at the great white throne judgment. He's going to judge the Christian and their motives and their works, trying by fire. And all the wood, hay, and stubble is going to be burned up and whatever rewards are going to be lost judgment 
In verse 5, behold, I was shapen in iniquity. When I read that last night, this is what I thought of. Psalms chapter 103, verse 12. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. Like as a father, and this is it, pitieth his children, so the Lord pitieth them that fear him. For he knoweth our frame. He remembereth that we are dust. We came from the dust of the earth. And then when I was reading about an hour ago, I came across this verse, verse uh, chap uh, chapter 58, verse 3. The wicked are estranged from the womb. They go astray as soon as they be born, speaking lies. Why? We're all descendants of Adam. He said, Behold, I was shapen in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. He is not talking about he was born out of wedlock. He was talking about he has the sinful nature. By one man, sin entered into the world, so death passed upon all men. Romans chapter 12. I don't believe it's chapter 12, it's verse 12. But anyway, I'm telling you, we have a sin problem. The whole world does. Us born again Christians, when I got saved, my soul and spirit got saved. My flesh still wants to go in the wrong direction. One day my flesh will be saved and my salvation will be complete. Here very soon. In verse 6, Behold, thou desirest truth in the inward parts, and in the hidden part thou shalt make me to know wisdom. Wisdom only comes from God. God wants truth in the inner parts. He doesn't want the lies. He doesn't want the deceiving. And uh, I just, I, I want to ask you this. Do you truly, Christian Fear God enough. We've sinned against the holy, righteous God. Why do we keep on hanging on to our unconfessed sins? If you love me, keep my commandments. That's what Jesus says. I'm telling you, you're never going to have a prayer life until you get this corrected. The first step, acknowledge your sin. The first step. You have to acknowledge your sin. You have to say, God, wash me. Wash me. And uh, the, I will go there in verse 7. It talks about it some more. Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me. There it is again. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. And born again, Christian, if you're walking hand in hand, and there's a verse that keeps coming to my mind, uh, how can two walk together except for they agree? And and how in the world can we walk with a holy, righteous God hand in hand every day of our lives? Born again, Christian, your sin is not worth it. The love of this world is not worth it. There's no comparison to the sweet, sweet fellowship you have behind closed doors. And it's you and God. There's nothing on the face of the earth. No other relationship with your wife or your husband or your son or your daughter or anybody on the face of the earth. As it is between the, uh, the born again Christian, the adopted son, the adopted daughter to the father up in heaven. And the only begotten Son that were joint heirs with Jesus Christ. There is no comparison. You still hanging on to the imitated diamond when you can have the real thing. Oh, I asked myself, why did I run for 12 years? And I asked myself, why did God allow me? God may not allow you to run for 12 years. He may not do it. Only the Lord can cleanse you like this in verse 7. There's no water. There's no religion. There's no nothing. Only Jesus' blood can cleanse you like this. 
and only the Father can cl can cleanse the Son. Only Jesus. Once you're His. In verse eight, make me to hear joy and gladness, that the bones which Thou hast broken may rejoice. What I don't understand is why we have that broken bone in our arm, and what we do is we just keep going. And let me explain this verse. God Almighty spanking the living daylights out of you, Christian, and you keep going in the same direction that you've been going in. And you keep on, and you keep on, and you keep on. And you got your broken arm, and you got your broken leg, and you're limping, and you're still holding on to that sin, and God's spanking you, and trying to get your attention. I was out on the rig out in the Gulf of Mexico, and all I could think about was Jonah and the well. And the Holy Spirit made it very clear to me, either I'm taking you home, or I'm maiming you, name, maiming you for life. Losing a leg, losing something. It got my attention. It took me four months to get right with the Lord. I was so far from Him. Quite a few of those years. I was sitting in the pew. That's all I was doing. Just sitting in the pew. But what about you? Is God spanking you? <laughs> you got to ask that question. Are you really his? I hope and pray that you are. He can blot your sins out by the blood of Jesus. Hide, verse 9, hide thy face from my sins and blot out all mine iniquities not just my adultery and murder but but lord all of my iniquities all of them and when you're walking hand in hand with the lord and you get so close to him you want to get right each and every day of your life one of the reasons because you love the sweet fellowship so much in verse 10 created me a clean heart O god and renew a right spirit within me I've had wrote this down. Right heart equals right spirit within me. You want a right heart within you? Have a right spirit? You want to have that? Create in me a clean heart. When you have a clean heart, you will have a right spirit about you. And I'm telling you, you can't hide it. When you're around someone, a pastor or someone that's very discerning in the Holy Spirit, helps them discern, it doesn't take long after a few minutes to, this person is not right with the Lord. It's so easy to do. In verse 11, cast me not away from thy presence and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. This is the Old Testament. In the New, Test New Covenant, the New Testament, which means covenant, when we receive Christ as our Savior, the Holy Spirit dwells inside of us and never leaves us. What a tremendous blessing that is. That's an unbelievable blessing. But King David and all the Old Testament saints, there were times where the Holy Spirit would depart. Look at Saul, King Saul. The Holy Spirit would depart. And King David is asking him, Oh Lord, I pray the Holy Spirit will not depart from me. In verse 12, Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation and uphold me with thy free spirit or willing spirit, restore unto me the joy of thy salvation. You remember the day, the moment you received Christ as your Savior, and you had never felt so clean in all of your life? I've always said this in my testimony. When I was 10 years old, I received Christ as my Savior, and I got up off of my little bitty knees, and I felt like someone had taken a wool brush that had a wooden handle on it, opened me up and scrubbed all the wicked sin out of me. I felt so clean. Christian, do you miss it? Why do you keep going day after day after day and not getting ever getting 100% right with God? How long has it been? How many months? How many years has it been, Christian? <coughs> Excuse me. How long has it been? Don't you think it's time to get right with God? You, here pretty soon, you're going to see him in the air. And some will be ashamed, and some will be joyful and happy and excited. Which one are you going to be? 
Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation. Verse 13. Then will I teach transgressors thy ways, and sinners shall be converted unto thee. How in the world can you live for God? How in the world can you preach? How in the world can you pray? How in the world can you witness? How in the world can you do something for God and help others? If you have unconfessed sin in your life, and grieve the Holy Spirit, and quench the Holy Spirit. How in the world can you do that? There's no power. There's no power to preach. There's no power to teach. There's no power to witness. I remember one time the Lord opened the door for me to witness, and I had an unconfessed sin, and I fell flat on my face. Why? It's such effective in our lives. It affects each and every one of us. It affects our sons and daughters. I was thinking about this last night. What is the sin, mommy and daddy, that you're holding on to that's a stumbling block to your son or daughter to receive Christ as your Savior? There's so much of more important things in this life. And then in verse 14, deliver me from blood guiltiness. He deserved death for murder and for adultery. <laughs> the law called out for both of them to come out and be stoned to death. But God forgave him. But you know what? The consequences was with David the rest of his life. Yes, he was back in fellowship with God, but we got to remember whatever you plan will come forth. And that's what we keep forgetting about, about our sins that we keep holding on to. I'm talking to the Christian. And David, King David was saying, talking about this blood guiltiness. And I'm running out of time, and so I want to finish this up in verse 15. O Lord, open thou my lips, and my mouth shall show forth thy praise. And listen to this, and this 16 and 17 is really what I want to get to. And, and verse 17, I believe, is the key verse. Verse 16, for thou desirest not sacrifice, else would I give it. Thou delightest not in the burnt offerings. That's what he told Saul. He, he, he would rather have obedience than sacrifice. He could hear the bleeding of the sheep in his ear, and he was supposed to destroy that sheep. And King Saul said, I got it for sacrifice. In verse 17, the sacrifices of God. What are the sacrifices of God? They are a broken spirit and a broken and a contrite heart. O oh God, thou wilt not despise. You acknowledge your sin. You examine yourself first. In Psalms 26, 2, examine me, O Lord, and prove me. Try my reins. And, and the prove me means test. And, and uh, try my reins and my heart means my motive. Try my motive. In Psalms 26, 2. Psalm 17, 3b, this is what David said. Thou hast tried me and shalt find nothing. And before you go to bed every night, you ought to be able to say that verse. God, you tried me and you found nothing. And I'm telling you, you're going to have a sweet, sweet spirit. And you're going to have a sweet, sweet fellowship with the God of the universe. We don't have to wait till we get to heaven, Christian. I wanted to wait, but now I don't. I want, to, I want to meet with him right now, and you can too. And I want to tell you, if you need help, please call our church, Newton Baptist Church in Covington, Georgia. We have a website. You pop it, it'll pop right up. And if you need help, call our church. We'll have people to help you. If you need help, make a comment on YouTube, and I'll get a hold of you. Go to Keith Watts Online Ministries on Facebook. It'll pop right up. You can go to it. We want to help you. But you know what? You got to decide if you're going to live for the Lord, Christian. You got to decide if you need Christ. We can't force you to do anything. And so I pray that you will have a good rest of the week. And I pray that you will allow God to clean you so you can have that sweet, sweet fellowship and pray to the God of the universe. May the Lord bless you, and you have a good day. Amen.